welcome to Hebrew Readers Church. I'm your brother Kasafo. Here with your brother Zakwa. Hope you all are enjoying the Sabbath day and things are going well with you. I wanted to touch today on a little insight on our building and our reactions to this growing process. You may find as you're learning yourself or getting insight as to the things that you're struggling with, they may be the feeling or reaction of beating ourselves up about it. And from the scriptures, going this direction is actually not helping our walk. And hopefully today we get some insight on that as well. In Psalms of Solomon chapter three, verse 11 to 13, it reads, the sinner stumbleth and curseth his own life. The day when he was begotten and his mother's travail. He addeth sin to sins while he liveth. He falleth, verily, grievous is his fall, and he riseth no more. The destruction of the sin is forever. The problem that the sinner has is when he stumbles, I'm going back to verse 11, the sinner stumbleth and curseth his life. So the reaction of a sinner when he's chasing for something he did wrong, or when he does something wrong, he goes into the beating himself up about it. The, whoa, I can't get it right. Why am I always doing this? He's going down into a spiral. And that causes him to add sin unto sins while he's living. Because his reaction to what transpired isn't by the right spirit. In the prior discussion, Zach well spoke about having a good intent, but then the action turns out evil because it's being filled with an evil spirit. And here today, hopefully we can get understanding that that inclination of getting, being very hard on ourselves when we do something wrong and going into sorrow or going into doubt about our ability to overcome the stronghold or the struggle that we're facing, there's an evil spirit dwelling within it. Because our intent may be good in the onset because we may be thinking we're being hard on ourselves because we want to get it right. But what's been happening to us is an evil spirit was in the inclination because the way we've been going about trying to get it right wasn't actually righteous. The scriptures help understand that beating ourselves down of being very hard on ourselves comes from the way the evil spirits operate in acts of thomas 76 there was a demon or a devil that was speaking with thomas about how the devil operates with them and how they operate in people as opposed to how christ operates with his servants and how he operates in his servants in acts of thomas 76 it says in the same way he nourishes and provides for his subjects, that's speaking of Christ, so also does he prepare chastisements, punishments, and torments for them that become my dwelling place. So you see, Satan, his preparations for those that devils get to dwell within are chastisements, punishments, torments. So you see that beating ourselves down, we're being led by these evil spirits to the punishments by being so hard on ourselves with the chastisements that we do upon ourselves. All right, so you're making, mm -hmm. you're making a habitation for the evil spirit that's gonna dwell in you, right? Because in Matthew, it talks about how we were supposed to be for the Holy Spirit to dwell in us. So you can see how literally it's, it has to be an environment within you that allows them to dwell there. Right. He goes on to say, in the same way, he rewards you for your works by giving you eternal life. So in the same way, he rewards my works by giving me eternal destruction. So this is a real crab in a bucket mentality. The devil that gets placed within us to cause us to, to treat ourselves harshly and hardly like we do. He knows he has eternal destruction waiting for him too. So he has pleasure in taking us down 
to the same path so that we can partake in the destruction he has. It goes on to say, and like you that are refreshed by your prayers, good works, and your spiritual thanksgivings, so am I also refreshed by doing murders, adulteries, and doing sacrifices made with wine upon altars. So that shows, remember we read in Psalms of Solomon that the sinner curseth his life and that bad mindset towards the fall, he adds sin upon sins. And we can see who is being refreshed by these sins being multiplied, the devils. On the other hand, we as believers in Yachi, we're supposed to be turning on to prayers and good works and spiritual thanksgiving. When our fault gets revealed, we're like, thank you. We give praise for knowing what we were doing wrong and the opportunity to get it right. And we start working, finding that insight and those solutions to do good works so that we can be refreshed by the spirit of Christ as opposed to giving power onto the spirits of the devil. Hey, Gotha, can I touch on that crab in a bucket mentality? Sure, please. Um, when Katha was referring to the crab in a bucket mentality, how the spirit operates in you, a lot of times we, we replicate the spirit that works in us. So a good key indicator to know if a spirit like that is operating in you is if you start operating the same way and start when you feel down or something, you'll start trying to make the people around you feel the same way that you feel. And that's a key indicator that you're actually operating like the spirit that's operating in you. Thank you for the insight. It goes on to say, and like you, as you convert men to eternal life, this is speaking to the apostle Thomas, so do I also pervert men to obey me to eternal destruction and torment. So the demons, the work they're doing, dragging us down, that's to pervert us, to turn us away unto the destruction from the faith in Christ. Yeah, now, it was something, Zach, you mentioned about we're supposed to have a dwelling place, an environment for the Holy Spirit to dwell, as opposed to the devil. And that leads to pointing that out to know the difference for our insight of what dwelling place we need to have. If you can go to the Shepherd of Hermas, the portion on where she dwells in long suffering, please. And it's also going to point out one of the spirits at work that gets us into that beating ourselves up is it in the visions is um it starts off with be thou long suffering and understanding i think is one of the commandments i want to say commandment three uh no one is long suffering and mandate five okay cool yeah angry temper sorry Yep, okay. Be thou long suffering and understanding, he saith, and thou shalt have the mastery over all evil deeds and shalt work all righteousness. That in itself lets us know what will separate us from the evil, the evil spirits that we just talked about that lead us to beating ourselves down. We not only are we to be long suffering and understanding to others, but also to ourselves. Because it's a process. Yache said himself, the seed that was sown on the good ground are them that in an honest and good heart bring forth fruit with patience. We have to have that patience toward ourselves as well. That it's going to take time. Not being lazy with the time, but acknowledging it takes time and enduring that work. Okay, and understanding what is causing it and what we can do to overcome it. That's humble mindset will help deliver us from the evil. 
Continue, please. For if thou art long suffering, the Holy Spirit that abideth in thee shall be pure, not being darkened by another evil spirit, but dwelling in a large room shall rejoice and be glad with the vessel in which she dwelleth, and shall serve Elohim with much cheerfulness, having prosperity in herself. Amen. We have a dichotomy. When chastened, when a fault is shown, or when a fault is committed, and we're in that process of choosing whether to acknowledge it or justify it, choose the side of long-suffering and understanding so the Holy Spirit can stay. Like, hey, that wasn't right. I did that wrong. I apologize. We turn to prayer, confessing our sins, and then we turn to good works, speaking truth in our heart and agreeing with it. Like, yes, that wasn't right. I broke your commandments. I apologize. Please forgive me and take away my sin and give me a clean heart. And taking on that joy of the Holy Spirit to be encouraged because faith is something we're going to touch on here too. Faith is essential in getting forward. Have to believe that we actually can overcome. Okay. I think that'll do it right there. Thank you. Sure. Now, <clears throat> the sinner on the other hand, because he curses his life and beats himself down, talking to idols to torment himself with the negative thoughts and the negative the perspective of himself, like, I can't get it right, I keep doing this, uh, why am I always doing this, all these things, what happens to him because he's hearkening to idols and turning from Allah Hayyam? Psalms of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 14 and 15 says, and he shall not be remembered when the righteous is visited. This is the portions of sinners forever. The sinner took it upon himself to be judged, to torment himself, be really hard on himself, judging himself for what he did wrong, instead of taking the perspective of the righteous and just humbling himself and acknowledging his sin and then waiting for Allah Hayyam to judge and waiting to see what Allah Hayyam would do, hoping upon his mercy. This helps for insight. The righteous actually understand who is the judge of all things. The righteous doesn't take judgment into his own hand. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15, we won't go here to touch on understanding how the spirit of pride works against us. Because in pride, I'm going to judge myself. Sit there, I do something wrong, I'm going to sit there condemning myself beat myself down because I'm taking the place of Allah Hayyam. But in humility, I acknowledge the truth that Allah Hayyam is judge and I confess my sin and put it in his hands and wait to see what he will decree. Even as David, who was perfect of heart towards him, he fell into Allah Hayyam's hand for a perfect example of how we ought to do, even when we make mistakes, to fall into the hands of Allah Hayyam. In 1 Corinthians 2 and 15, it says, But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. This is referring to the Father. As Yahweh said, Allah I am is a spirit and seeketh those that worship him in spirit and in truth. He judges all things. And we, as believers, we are not to judge ourselves nor judge others because we know. He is truly judge of all. And Paul set an example for us in his growth process as he was learning to walk in the faith as well. In 1 Corinthians 4 and 3, it says, But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you. Now, that's interesting because we had been talking about how seeking to be perfect in the sight of men we're going to be waiting forever because we can't be perfect in the sight of men. We can only be perfect in the sight of Allah Hayyam. So our focus is to 
seek perfection in his sight, doing the things that are pleasing to him. And Paul here, he showed that same sentiment because it was a small thing for him for other people to judge him because he was focused on being judged by Allah Hayyam, knowing that Allah Hayyam actually judges all things. He goes on to say, or of man's judgment. So he wasn't concerned with being judged by people in the faith or being judged by people of the world. His sight was set on Allah Hayyam, firstly. Yea, I judge not mine own self, neither did he judge himself. This is that spiritual mind Zach was speaking about where all his assessments is according to the law, which is spiritual and the fruits of the spirit. And committing himself on Talahayim, not beating himself up about things as we're going to touch on to see how he looked at himself while going through the growing process. But in all of it, acknowledging what's true and committing himself on Talahayim. Let's look at how he assessed himself as he was growing. In Romans chapter 7, verse, we're going to read about verse 15 down to probably about verse 25. He says, For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. I'm going back to the beginning of the verse. For that which I do, I allow not. That saying, the things that I'm doing, I don't allow it. Remember, we talked about how there's that good intent we have. If there's an evil spirit, there's going to turn it to something evil for itself. So Paul, he's explaining what he was going through as he was learning to do righteousness. He wanted to do right, but he's finding he's doing things that aren't right. He goes on to say, for what I would, that do I not. So the good things he wants to do, his good intent, he's not fulfilling. Because there's this evil spirit there. But what I hate, that do I. The very thing he hates to do because he's trying to get it right. He's learning the faith. He's in the law, in the fruits, learning about them. But he's seeing, the more he's learning, the more he's seeing the things that he hates are actually happening because there's a spirit dwelling there that's taking him away from what he actually wants to do. Um, you remember when um, Yate went to go pray and the disciples had fallen asleep? Yes. You remember what he said to them? It's in um, Matthew 26 and 41. He okay. says, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He was literally saying the same thing that Paul was saying. He said, uh, pretty much like be on guard and always be in prayer because the temptation is going to come the evil spirit the, the evil inclination is going to come you just have to be on guard against it because the spirit is willing to do what's right but the flesh is what causes you to go into the temptation mm. so you can see exactly what paul was actually talking about and it makes sense Right. And a lot of times, you know, if um, from experiences, you know how the evil spirits are, keep saying things over and over and over, and it just wears you down. You get weary until you finally give into it. So that's why he was like, watch and pray, you know, because you have to really be on guard and really understand what's against you. we really have to be watching ourselves paying attention to our thoughts and keep praying we see the thought keep coming that means keep praying the spirit is still the evil spirit is still working to get us away and right. we need refreshment 
because we're in a spiritual warfare and we know now our refreshment comes from prayers, good words, and thanksgiving. So that's a great solution. <laughs> that's insight. Get to praying and be thankful. I'm not letting the evil spirit take away our joy. And that same beat down, torment, torment, torment to get us to where, all right, we got him. He's in sorrow now. We got him. We got him doubting. They, they come as a team. They come as a team. It's a gang mentality. Crab in a bucket and gang mentality are evil spirits. All right. We have Yache. <laughs> He's a man of war. <laughs> That's all right. All right. So continuing. Thank you, Zach. That was good edification. You're welcome, brother. Praise the higher. Now going back, continuing to see how Paul looks at this process he's going through. He says in verse 16 of Romans 7, if then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. This helps us know, even in the midst of being overtaken by evil spirits to do the things we don't want to do, there's opportunity to do righteousness. Because he said, if then I do which I would not, if I do the things I don't want to do, I consent unto the law that it is good. So when the bad thing happened, when we get overtaken or evil spirit leads us astray to do something wrong, when we acknowledge that it's not what we want to do and confess the sin, we're in agreement with Allah Hayyam. We're consenting that his law is good. That's a righteous thing. But if we do what the evil spirit wants us to do and justify the wrong or not acknowledge it because we don't want to be wrong, we're turning against Allah Hayyam. We're forsaking his law. We're turning onto idols, which is against the commandment. So hopefully that helps with seeing how in the midst of growing, you can still do a good work in the growing process. That, and, that helps you understand why pride is the beginning of turning away from Allah Hayyam. Because each time you do it, you're turning away from Allah Hayyam. It's not that pride itself. It's the beginning of turning away from Allah. It's the inclination of pride. Yes. Every time you listen to that inclination, when it's telling you to justify something or to go this direction, you're literally turning away from Allah every time. Yes. Do I need so, to get the scripture? It's Sirach 10 and uh, about verse 12, I think. If you can just read it real quick. It's turned away from his maker. The beginning of pride. Each and every time you do it, at the very beginning, you're turning away. That's good insight to know what spirit is at work so we can choose the meekness and lowliness of heart, of being honest, as the IJ said, an honest and good heart, like that wasn't right. Paul goes on to say in Romans 7 and 17, now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Look at his growth process. First, he got to a place where he actually didn't want to do the evil things. That's a big step because he said the things that I would, I do not. I think so. He really wanted to get it right. He didn't have pleasure in doing evil things. That's a major step to be able to separate ourselves from the entities that work within us. And then he gets to where he understands by that separation, because now he has hatred for it. He can clearly see the enemy. Like, that's not me that doing it. That's this spirit. <laughs> Truth is coming into his heart. He's seeing it truly for what it is. His spiritual eyes are being opened. 
now he's in the spiritual perspective because he's chosen to love the law of Ahaya and the fruits of the spirit. That's what he really wants. So now his eyes are open to see the spiritual warfare within him. He calls it out. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. So brothers and sisters, we need to pray and be encouraged in our hearts to fight, to actually hate evil, to not want to do it. Knowing that we're going to fall along the way. It's a part of the process. A just man falleth seven times and get it back up. Take it in stride. But fight to get away from pleasure in sin. We need that as we see with Paul. He had to get to where he actually hated the wrongdoing to see things clearly. We're gonna we're gonna have to go into um forgiveness on probably the next lesson. I got those scriptures together, I'll send them over to you. Um, because <laughs> part of being able to to get past this point is being able to forgive yourself because that's what usually holds people back from being able to, to push forward. Amen. We have to do that. That all makes sense because bearing a grudge keeps us from moving forward. And that's not being long suffering and understanding for the Holy Spirit to dwell. Right. So touching on the difference we need to get to where we don't have pleasure in the evil that we're doing so that the evil spirits can get exposed. In the parable eight of the shepherd of Hermas, this is chapter five, verse five of Hermas parable eight. What kinds of self-indulgence, sir, say I, are harmful? Every action, saith he, is self-indulgence to a man which he does with pleasure. For the irascible man, when he gives his reins to his passion, is self-indulgent and the adulterer and the drunkard and the slanderer and the liar and the miser and the defrauder and he that doeth things akin to these giveth the reins to his peculiar passion therefore he is self-indulgent in his action self-indulgent by definition, is characterized by doing or tending to do exactly what one wants, especially when this involves pleasure or idleness. Hopefully we get to see it's because we have pleasure in whatever struggles we're struggling with that they still have place. But we have to work to get to where we actually hate it and don't have pleasure in it. And that takes prayer and work and paying attention to it, watching and praying. It can't just be in word. Our deeds have to show it. We have to put forth that effort to get deliverance. Praying that the Lord be gracious to look upon our afflictions for perspective. We're going to be fighting because it's something we're used to, something we've liked. So it's a fight to pay attention and keep praying and fight to find joy, fight to be thankful in the affliction. When the mistake happens again, because it's something we're getting over that we actually like, being honest about it, not justifying it and praying again, being thankful for it being revealed and enduring that, not giving up, not forsaken, thinking that we can't be delivered or the Lord ain't going to help us. No, it's opportunity to call upon him more. Lord, help me. This thing is too strong for me. Deliver me from my enemy. As David prayed, you see David crying out in the Psalms for help. Forgiving yourself for when you fall and not judging yourself and saying that you're not worthy or you're not Allah will not forgive you. All these things are tactics that are used against you to keep you from walking and, to, and, and going and, and, and overcoming. Amen. 
finishing up on self-indulgence. This is verse six. All these habits of self-indulgence are harmful to the servants of Allah. I am. On account of these deceits, therefore, they so suffer who are punished and tormented. So that's a work of truth. When we find we've done something in our pleasure, acknowledging this is harmful to me. I'm sorry, Lord, this isn't right. And again, not looking to justify it. Oh, but they said this, or they made me feel like this. You know, acknowledging, speaking truth. Going on in verse seven. But there are habits of self-indulgence likewise, which save men. So here are some solutions for us. For many are self-indulgent in doing good, being carried away by the pleasure it gives to themselves. So we're working on becoming a new man, finding pleasure in the good, finding joy in that, in the good works, working to make that our new mindset. This self-indulgence then is expedient for the servants of Allah Hayyam and bringeth life to a man of this disposition. But the harmful self-indulgences aforementioned bring to men torments and punishments. You may have noticed torments and punishments keep being mentioned. You do things we have pleasure in that are evil. Evil spirits are already starting to work. They get us to do the evil. Then comes the other demons to get us to beat ourselves up about it. And we're gone. We're just going closer and closer to where the devil has prepared torments and punishments for us. Hey, Kasa. Yes, sir. What's the scripture in Hermes that talks about after the, the evil spirit leaves that you're left with the sorrow? Bereft of his good intent. Type right. that in, in your thing. That's what it should say. Huh? If you type in bereft. Man, how you spell that? <laughs> B-E-R-E-F-T, I think. Uh, it's in mandate five. Let's say Maggie Temper. Yep, it says, but angry temper in this first place is foolish, fickle, and senseless. Then from foolishness is engendered bitterness, and from bitterness, wrath, and from wrath, anger, and from anger, spite. Then spite being composed of all these evil elements becometh a great sin and incurable. For when all these spirits dwell in one vessel, where the Holy Spirit also dwelleth, that vessel cannot contain them, but overfloweth. The delicate spirit, therefore, as not being accustomed to dwell with an evil spirit, nor with harshness, departed from a man of that kind, and seeketh to dwell with gentleness and tranquility. Then when it hath removed from that man in whom it dwells, that man becomes emptied of the righteous spirit, and henceforward, being filled with the evil spirits, he is unstable in all his actions, being dragged about hither and thither by the evil spirits, and is altogether blinded and bereft of his good intent. Thus, then it happeneth to all persons of angry temper. The testimonies give understanding. When all those spirits are there, we're blinded. The Holy Spirit is gone and we're blinded being, I have, this is that experience of these racing thoughts, continual racing thoughts beating us down. This is what these spirits do. And we know the source, angry temper. Angry temper isn't just literally anger as wanting to fight. Angry temper is a heavy passion, a heavy emotion. You may get into a lot of grief because you did something wrong. That's vexation from where arises anger. Or one may, because of pride, because pride is the beginning of it, because of pride, one may get angry because one is wrong and one didn't want to be wrong. Or 
one may get angry because one wants to be justified in what was done. However way these spirits work, they'll take it any way they can get it. Yeah. Or you don't want to be wrong. So we see how that works. But instead of being angry, be temperate. Be lowly. Be honest. Okay. Thank you, Zach. Praise God. Man, touching back to Hermas, parable eight, the rest of verse seven, it says, the harmful self-indulgences affirmation bring to men torments and punishments. And if they continue in them and repent not, they bring death upon themselves. So for us, if we're being honest with ourselves, yes, we've had pleasure in evil. But uh, as graces, there's a means to come out of it. We can repent. Repent, pray, do good works. Offer spiritual thanksgiving with our lips. Be, be faithful that we can overcome. All right. And let's see how Paul, he took on optimism. Going back to Romans chapter 7, verse 18. After he acknowledged what was going on in him, he grew the hatred for what was wrong. He was overcoming the pleasure and evil so that his spiritual eyes were open so that he could see that it was an evil spirit at work. He goes on to say in verse 18, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. Just as Yache said, the flesh is weak. For to will is present with me. That will is by the spirit. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. Look at that. Even Paul needed insight. <laughs> Paul went through the process. The apostle Paul needed insight of how to overcome his sins. Right. He's like, I know what I'm supposed to do, but how do you do it? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> That's encouraging to know we're on the right track. <laughs> Going through the experiences they went through, we need insight. He knew he needed help. That's humble. He goes on to say, for the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that do I. I know I need help. I need understanding of how to perform the things that are good because the good things I want to do, I don't do. But the evil that I don't want to do, that's what I'm doing. So I know <laughs> people can understand this. This is reality. <laughs> now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Look at the insight we get into the spiritual eye. We're separating flesh and spirit when we get to the place of actually not wanting to do it. He called it out. He said, if I'm doing the things that I don't want to do, then it's not me that doing it. It's the sin that dwelleth in me. Hopefully that helps with the long suffering and understanding <laughs> for ourselves. I'm being attacked. <laughs> this spirit is doing this to me because I want to get it right. Why would I beat myself up when I need to call upon the Lord? Hey, this, this spirit is bullying me. I need help. Even more reason to call out, because what does the Lord do when he sees his servants in affliction? He delivers. That prayer isn't in vain. That's, as you all know, Allah is patient and long-suffering. And when he gets to the place where he's fed up, it gets very bad for those spirits. So endure it. Endure it calling upon him. All right. 
he goes on to say, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of Allah, I am after the inward man. That's the change we are working to get to where that's our delight. That's our pleasure. The law of Allah and his fruits. But I see another law in my members worn against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. So Paul went through the experience of being overtaken, taken captive by sin. And through that experience of cleaving to what's right in his mind, he got to see the difference and separate himself from the actions to see I'm being overtaken here because I delight after the law of Allah in my mind. I'm turning into that spiritual mind, mind and spiritual things. But this war of the flesh is still here. The spiritual perspective. Yes. Knowing that, let's see where he went next. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Who's going to deliver me from my flesh? Who's going to deliver me from the works of the flesh? Because I don't like it. I don't want it. My delight is in the law, but this spirit keeps taking me captive. Who can help me? Yache Christ. This is why prayer, Yache said it, pray, watch and pray. Even the devil acknowledged we are, we are refreshed. Our strength comes from prayer, good works, and spiritual thanksgiving. We need Yache. That's interesting. His desire was of the spiritual things, the good things, right? Yeah. But where he was in his walk, within the flesh and yeah. he had to acknowledge it he had to acknowledge he had to, where he truly was he had to speak truth in his heart right and that's what brought about his salvation he was real with himself that's lowliness and meekness of heart brothers and sisters that vulnerability we're seeing from Brother Paul, and we ought to have in ourselves and amongst ourselves. There's a great precept in Shepherd of Hermas that says, Life is for all of those that keep the commandments of Elayim, of Ahaya. For in the kingdom, there's nothing about, there's no glory of any kind, and there's nothing about first places. But it's about long suffering and humility in man. Within ourselves and amongst ourselves, there's no glory for us. We're not seeking to be first place of anything, but we're seeking to be long suffering and humble. And Paul set the example, talking about his experiences being honest, outright with others so that he can grow and they can grow. Having an example. What was that preset? Can you type that in your thing so we can get that preset, please? For Parable one. 8, chapter 7 and 6. 7 and 6. Okay, cool. Go ahead and read that, please. Life is for all those that keep the commandments of Ahaya. But in the commandment, there is nothing about first places or about glory of any kind, but about long suffering and humility in man. In such men, therefore, is the life of Ahaya. But in factitious and lawless men is death. And that's good admonition for us, seeing the power of humility and long suffering. All right. Hopefully that's helpful for us. Now, rounding out here, to get to the end of this, 
we learn hopefully about judging ourselves. We're not supposed to judge ourselves because Allah Haim is judge of all. And Paul confirmed it in 1 Corinthians 4, verse 3 and 4. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self. For I know nothing by myself. Yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judges me is the Lord. That's our mindset. The Lord is our judge. We confess. We be honest with ourselves and we seek solutions. We seek insight to how to do right. We pray to the Lord first and foremost. And we go on to his apostles or his ministers for guidance. Because the scripture speaks in Sirach about have one counselor in a thousand. And also go to a man of understanding who you know to keep the law. That's in Sirach as well. Now, knowing the Lord is who judged us, let's look at the mindset of the righteous man when he stumbles and what it brings forth in the Psalms of Solomon, chapter 3 again. It says in verse 3, the righteous remembereth Ahiah at all times. That is important because Idols are not in his thoughts. He keeps a high in his mind even after making a mistake. The righteous remembers a high at all times with thanksgiving and declaration of the righteousness of a high's judgment. So look at how when the, he makes a mistake, he still has thanksgiving and he declares the righteousness of a judgment by acknowledging, hey, your law is right and good. I agree. What I did was wrong. That wasn't the right thing. It goes on to say, the righteous despiseth not the chastening of Ahaya. His ways are always before Ahaya. So the righteous person, he doesn't despise the chastening because he welcomes it. He knows he wants to get it right. And he's just like Paul. I want to know how to perform righteousness. So thank you. Tell me, chasten me so that I can get this right. And his ways are always before Ahaya because the just person understands Ahaya looks on all of our inclinations. Ahaya pays attention to everything we're doing. His mindset is not set on what people think or how it looks to others, but Ahaya alone. Okay, he's seeking that relationship above. So when things go wrong, let's see what the righteous does. The righteous stumbleth and holdeth Ahaya righteous. No excuses, no self-justifying, and he didn't give in to sorrow. Just like David did. When Nathan came to David and showed what David did wrong, David said, I sinned. Right. Call a spade a spade, speaking truth. Verse 5, he falleth and looketh out for what Allah would do to him. He knows Ahaya is judge of all. He isn't judging himself. He falls. He made a mistake. He got overtaken. But evil inclination got him to fall. And what does he do right after? He looks out for what Allah would do to him. He then go into, oh, man, I can't believe I did this. Da, 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 da. He ain't beating himself down. He declares Ahaya is righteous, takes the chastening, and now He's hopeful because he knows that he is long suffering and full of compassion and mercy. And he's not taking that for granted now. He's hopeful. Allah, I'm going to deliver him. What does this do? He seeketh out whence his deliverance will come. He did not lose hope, brothers and sisters. He's looking for deliverance. How can Ahaya help me? He didn't start doubting. The steadfastness of the righteous is from Allah Hayyam, their deliverer. Look at that. There's a way to be steadfast even when we make mistakes. You can still be with Allah Hayyam in the process of growing. 
hopefully that helps understand how men like David, though he made about what three mistakes, <laughs> he was still righteous. He didn't turn from his alahayim. The steadfastness of the righteous is from alahayim, their deliverer. Their largest not in the house of the righteous, sin upon sin. The righteous pays attention. They don't go into sorrow and start doubting. They keep their hope in Alahayim. They count a higher righteous for chasing in them. They keep in mind that Alahayim is looking on all our inclinations. So they're focused to do us right in his sight for their own heart, like they have it in their heart to do us right. And then they wait on Allah Hayyam's deliverance, hoping, continuing in hope that he'll provide a way out. And they're paying attention. They're watching. They're praying. They're focused on good works. Offering spiritual things, giving, giving thanks for everything, finding optimism in everything going on in their life. Staying positive. This keeps them from sin because this is a part of being long suffering and understanding with ourselves and with Allah. Hayyam. This is keeping them from every evil word. Their largest not in the house of the righteous, sin upon sin. The righteous continually searcheth his house. Yache said, Watch this righteous man, he's looking in his house. He's not getting lazy. He's not going wary by those evil spirits and what they're talking about. The attacks aren't wearing him down. He's staying in the course. He's praying. He's praying. He's thanking. He's staying the course to pay attention. The righteous continually searches his house to remove utterly all iniquity done by him in error. He's finding solutions. Seeking help wherever he has to go. Go to the minister, go to the priest, go to the counselor, pray to Allah Hayyam. Take the time, reflect, self-assessment, doing what he has to do. Searching the law, reading the commandments. He's getting after it. And what does this bring about? Verse 9 and 10. He maketh atonement for his sins of ignorance by fasting and afflicting his soul. And that's not fast with food and water. That's fast in a fast of righteousness. Afflicting the soul to actually do what's right. And Ahaya counteth guiltless every pious man and his house. So this, we've just went through how a pious man approaches this growth process and this journey. And we get to see what he does, not only frees him from guilt but also frees his house from guilt so his family will be delivered too so hopefully that helps with perspective of understanding how not to judge ourselves and how to take things in stride in this growth process and avoid that evil inclination but let our good intent be truly good by doing it in the fruits of the spirit, being long suffering and understanding with ourselves and with others and being honest with ourselves and with others. Uh, so you remember how the mm -hmm. angels respond when Allah actually gives a judgment since we're actually talking about judgment? And uh, Apocalypse of Paul. Right, Apocalypse of Paul, I think it's, let me see. I can jump straight into it. I guess so everybody can see an example. Um, Apocalypse of Paul, chapter 18. And then that same hour, the souls were exhibited in the mist. And the soul of the sinner knew them. And Ahia said to the soul of the sinner, I say unto thee, soul, confess thy work, which thou wroughtest in these souls, whom thou seest when they were in the world. And he answered and said, Ahiah, it is not yet a full year since I slew this one and poured his blood upon the ground. And with another, a woman, I committed fornication. Not this alone, but I greatly harmed her in taking away her goods. And Ahiah Elohim, the just judge, said, 
either thou didst not know that he who does violence to another, if he dies first, who sustains the violence, is kept in this place until the door of hurt dies, and then both stand in the presence of the judge. And now each receive according to his deed. And I heard a voice on one saying, let that soul be delivered into the hand of Tartarus and led down into hell. He shall lead him into the lower prison and shall be put in torments and left there to the great day of judgment. And again, I heard a thousand thousand angels saying hymns to Ahia and crying, thou art just, O Ahia, and just are thy judgments. They did the same thing the righteous man does. They said, thou art just and just are thy judgments. And the righteous is said in verse 5 of Psalms of Solomon 3, the righteous stumbleth and holdeth a higher righteous. Speaking truth. They, everybody agrees with the law. Even Paul said, I consent that the law is good by not being in agreement with the evil deed. So that acknowledging a fault is very powerful. Because how can you change? How, you, how can you change if you don't admit that you've done something wrong? It keeps you in it. Yes. Is he that confessor will find mercy? We need to then, confess. Then it leaves you in a place. Are you trying to please men or are you trying to please Allah? It does put in perspective. It does. Which one is more important? And just like Yache said, they have the reward. Those that want to be seen in the midst of men. Yeah. We got to know who we want to look good in front of. Right. Can look good in the spirit by confessing faults to Allah. Uh, Matthew 6 and 2. Oh, I'll start at 6 and 1. It says, Take heed that you do not your own before men to be seen of them. So you want to look good before men. You want to do the things that look good or that seem well. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thy alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee. So don't go telling everybody that you didn't did this or you didn't did that, you know, trying to get that recognition. As the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thy alms may be in secret. And thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. I put some, I put some things in perspective. You have Paul in the letter confessing his faults, being vulnerable, discussing the struggles he went through. But the hypocrite will come trying to make themselves look good in the yeah. sight of men. Talking about, yeah, but talking about whatever they did right, but not willing to talk about their wrongs or their shortcomings or their struggles. I'm more concerned with what men see instead of their spiritual perspective, considering what Allahim sees and let another man praise you. <laughs> Paul said, I hear glory in his infirmities, right? <laughs> that was the glory to show, like, well, I was working and things I'm struggling with. Yeah. Yes, the humility to, to 
show what Elaheim is working in, the things I'm struggling with, the things I'm being delivered from, and Elaheim be magnified in it. Thank you. And in closing, a big thing is we have this insight. We have to put on faith. We have to turn from being doubtful minded. For she is a daughter of the devil. In Hermas Mandate 9, chapter 1, verse 8. For indeed, this doubtful mindedness is a daughter of the devil and worketh great wickedness against the servants of Allah. Therefore, despise doubtful mindedness and gain the mastery over it in everything, clothing thyself with faith, which is strong and powerful. So, in paying attention to our thoughts, make sure we have the faithful inclination, okay? Because it's strong and powerful to have the mastery. For faith promiseth all things, accomplisheth all things, but doubtful mindedness, as having no confidence in itself, fails in all the works which it doeth. We have to believe Allah Hayim can do it. We have to believe we can do all things through Christ who strengthened us. Mm -hmm. That we need that confidence. Because those thoughts that lead us not to have confidence is why. That doubtful mind is why we can't do anything right. Mm -hmm. It says, fails in all the works which it doeth. You find you're struggling and everything, can't get it right. A doubtful mind. And pride, because pride is where it starts. Okay. Thou seest then, saith he, that faith is from above, from the Lord, and hath great power. But doubtful mindedness is an earthly spirit from the devil, and hath no power. Do thou therefore serve that faith which hath power, and hold aloof from doubtful mindedness, which hath no power, and thou shalt live unto Allah Hayyam, yea, and all those shall live unto Allah Hayyam, who are so minded. With that, we're going to continue building. We have to touch on forgiveness, Lord willing, coming up soon. And we're going to touch on faith. And Zach will build on that in the future. Lord willing, this was helpful. We are Hebrew Readers Church. I hope you all have a wonderful Sabbath day, and we look forward to spending time building with you all again. Questions, comments, leave them in the comment section, or feel free to send us an email at hebrewreaders at gmail.com. All right, anything else, Zakwa? Uh, if you would like to make Hebrew Readers your church home, just send us an email at hebrewreaders at gmail.com. We'd love to have you. And we hope everybody enjoyed the lesson. As Brother Kafifo said, if you have any questions or any need any further edification, just send us an email at hebrewreaders at gmail.com as well. And we'll love to get back to you. And definitely check out the website, www.hebrewreaders.com. Shalom. All right, everybody. Shalom.